It's time for the five at five. And listen, if you know me and you know how I feel about Man United, you know I'm going to enjoy this one. Let's get into the five at five. Number one, I want to talk about Granit Xhaka and not so much even focus on his performance or his goal. We'll get into that a little bit, but mainly the fact that Granit Xhaka playing at the Emirates Stadium in front of a crowd that in October 2019 booed him off and he responded angrily to where people were talking about he may never ever play for the club again. This time he walked off the pitch blowing kisses. I mean, have a look at this. This was not possible in my view on that day in October 2019 when he walked off the pitch cupping his ear to Arsenal fans and also a lot worse. But it does show that He's had a massive, massive turnaround. And whether you agree that he is the man for the job or not next season and beyond, it's nice to see the fact that some of that damage that was caused on that day has been repaired to an extent. You know, I said we'll touch on a little bit his performance in the game against Man United. Have a look at his game by numbers here. He had a very, very good game. Even though he wasn't my man of the match, for me, Mohamed Elneny was my man of the match because of his importance in playing out the back and how much pressure that relieved on the team where maybe Aaron Ramsdale, Cedric certainly struggled. It wasn't the easiest game to play out the back, um, kind of because of ourselves, not so much because of Man United's pressing, because I don't think they're very good at that. But I thought Mohamed Elneny made it much easier. But going back to Granit Xhaka, he was brilliant alongside Elneny. And the goal that he scored and the timing of that goal was unbelievably important. I think a lot of United fans would be fair to say that it was slightly against the run of, pre uh, against the run of play. They were pushing against Arsenal and without creating amazing chances, I did feel stressed. I did feel as a fan in that stadium that, you know what, they might make this sort of um, pressure count. And when Granit Xhaka let go of that ball. It was right in line of where I sit in the North Bank lower. And from the minute it left his foot, I knew that was going to be a goal. And the amount of pressure that lifted off the team, it allowed them to play with more freedom and just um, remove that fear factor. Huge, huge moment in the game. Huge, huge moment in our season. And I, for one, no matter what I think about Granit Xhaka, I'm glad that he had that moment to enjoy. Whether he's here next season or not, I hope that he leaves feeling good about his time at the club as much as that is possible. Number two, and I'm going to talk about two players who didn't have the best game after talking about two players in Xhaka and Aouneni who did have very good games. And the two players, you can probably guess it, right? Our fullbacks, Cedric Soares and Nuno Tavares. Unfortunately, chaotic. That, that's probably the word that I would choose to use for these players. And I don't want to go and do an, assass an assass assassination on either one of these and get into the numbers and speak about individual mistakes and errors and stuff. I just feel like speaking generally and having to be honest as Arsenal fans, these guys uh, are not at the level. I was very, very relieved to see Tommy Asu come back into the team and I'm really hoping that he can be, um, you know, in the lineup for the West Ham game and beyond. Especially West Ham, they've got good aerial threat. And I think Tommy Yasu, he's so important to Arsenal in terms of um, providing that aerial threat. Or not even threat, that defensive aerial ability. From goal kicks against Man United, we were aiming for Saka. That makes no sense to me. Saka's probably the last person you should be aiming for if you're a Premier League goalkeeper. But Ramsdale was consistently kicking it to Saka. I just want to see Tommy Yasu come back and play that role that Saka was trying to play. And then not only that, let Cedric kind of return to the bench. I will give Cedric credit. I think since Tomiyasu's been injured, which has been a long time, Cedric has come in and he's done an okay job. And also we have to consider that Cedric was probably never meant to play as much as he did. So Cedric, you've kind of done your job. You've, um, you've, you've filled in when you've needed to. It wasn't the easiest game for him on, um, on the weekend against United. But yeah, I think, I think hopefully that's his time done for this season. And on the other flank, Nuno Tavares. Well, on, on this case, Tierney's still out, so it doesn't look like his time is done. But Nuno Tavares is one of those players like, God, you don't know what you're going to get. He's so unreliable. Sometimes you can really pull something out of the bag. Other times you're left scratching your head. He's clearly not defensively very aware. On one hand, he scored the goal. I 
he's a left back and he's got a one one yard tap in even that maybe a more defensively disciplined left back wouldn't have scored that goal but you know it worked out for us on this occasion but then for the penalty that was given away thankfully that uh, Fernandez missed you know what's he doing his arm is just really outstretched no need for that again that lack of defensive discipline against Chelsea as Belaqueta managed to steal in front of him because he's not defensively aware it's a problematic to have two players in those positions where teams can look at them and say let's attack them down the flanks and I did feel like we did struggle down the flanks a little bit Sancho and Alanga they did have joy thankfully we came out the game with the three points but there were reasons for concern in those two um, fullback positions. Number three, we can move on from the serious stuff now about the players who played well and the players who didn't play very well. And we can laugh and love this moment from Aaron Ramsdale. Just have a watch of this. This just, do you know what? It made me laugh. I know, I know, I know. I should say, oh, we should be more sportsmanlike and this isn't on. But do you know what? I don't care. I actually don't care. That was an explosion of passion from Aaron Ramsdale. And there's so much riding on our season. And also, Fernandez of all people. Honestly, for me, I don't think there's many players in the Premier League that are less likeable than Bruno Fernandez. Honestly, always moaning and crying and diving and cheating. Always penalties. I get, I get fed up of it. If he was someone like a Kevin De Bruyne... You turn around and you kind of say, well, do you know what? You have to respect his craft and the way he plays the game. But do you know what? For Fernandez, no. Absolutely love seeing that from Aaron Ramsdale. Clearly he gave us all of those Martin Keown vibes. And even looking back at that Keown thing, of course he shouldn't have done it. But um, do you know what? United, the way that they play and the rivalry and the hatred that exists between these two clubs, especially at the time of Keown, that's what spills over. And do you know what? I want that rivalry back. If Aaron Ramsdale is doing that, you know United players. If he makes a mistake, you can imagine if Fernandez scores a free kick against him uh, next season, he'll be given him stick. And then at that point, Arsenal fans have got to turn around and say, fine, we'll take it on the chin. But do you know what? Aaron Ramsdale love to see that. Number four. And listen, I was just talking about Aaron Ramsdale being a bit mischievous on the pitch. Well, listen. His uh, manager was doing exactly the same thing off the pitch. So this one is all about Mikel Arteta's dark arts. And I'll talk about whether I'm for it or against it afterwards. But first, have a watch of this video. When the ref is walking over to have a look at the monitor for VAR, Mikel Arteta is applying that pressure straight away. Getting out of his technical area, no respect for that hashed line. And I know some people don't like it. It's the pundits are talking about it. He shouldn't be able to do that. They were saying that on commentary. Paul Scholes, I think Rio Ferdinand, they spoke about it afterwards. Listen, I do not care. My manager, I want him applying that pressure. We know in football that works. And what I love about what Mikel Arteta did after, he then beckoned the crowd to get them riled up to start applying pressure. Funnily enough, I was in the North Bank lower and I was saying to the person next to me, I don't know why everyone's so quiet. We should be whistling and booing and making noise and letting the referee hear all of that while she's checking the decision because if it is a marginal one if he's a little bit unsure that's our job as the crowd to sway him Mikel Arteta recognizes that and I feel like you know we don't do that enough at home we don't make it enough of a hostile atmosphere for referees just to sway them the fact that Mikel Arteta right at the end of the clip you might have to watch it back to catch it right at the end of the clip goes and like does that to get the crowd going shows you that he realizes the importance of the crowd if you're at a game if you're there in person you've got a part to play that's why they call us the 12th man and we need to get up and let the referee and the opposition players everyone know that we're there and do our part in this really really important run-in so we can go and get that top four number five and i was just talking about the importance of the crowd so do you know what i want to focus here on the atmosphere yesterday at home and also Ashburton Army, who I want to give a lot of credit to. Now, firstly, the atmosphere at home. Have a watch of this. That is just the Emirates Stadium faithful in full voice. It was brilliant yesterday. Everyone was up for it. People were singing, making noise. It was a really, really good atmosphere. And you know what? A lot of credit should go to Ashburton Army for that because even before the start of the game they did their TIFO display 
And you know what? I want to I wanna speak about this because I've seen them get some criticism, criticising the TIFO display and sort of like pointing to other clubs who have done it on a much bigger and a much better and grander scale. Do you know what? Give these guys some slack. They funded this, from what I know, out of their own pockets. From the first step to trying to do something to improve the atmosphere, to actually pulling that off in a big game against Man United, funding it themselves, arranging it with the club, that deserves a lot of credit and appreciation. So as far as I'm concerned, nothing but love and credit for those guys. Keep going, keep doing it. If you're watching this video... Um, Go and check them out on uh, Twitter and Instagram and stuff. Ashburton Army. They've even got a little PayPal thing to fundraise for their next one. I'll be chucking a couple of quid there as well because I think, you know, we should be supporting them. We've often spoken about the lack of atmosphere at the Emirates Stadium. Little initiatives like that are really, really important. And going back to point four, Mikko Arteta recognises that the crowd playing their part is important. And even at the end of the game... Thierry Henry, Dennis Bergkamp were with Saka and Smith Rowe in front of that taking a picture. It means something to the players as well. So instead of giving them stick, give them credit, get involved and give them some encouragement. Ashburton Army, well done, keep it up. That's it from me. That's the five at five done. Another happy one. Fingers crossed there'll be plenty more of these happy ones. None more so important than that shootout on the 12th of May against Tottenham in the North London derby. Thankfully, they dropped points this weekend. But even then, that derby looks like it could be the shootout for top four. The last thing I'm going to say, there's a link below for my social charity orphan sponsorship where all of you guys contribute. If you can, please just chuck a few pounds, just three pounds, if you can and chuck some money on there i'd really appreciate that we're coming up to the end of the month of fasting where i do this fundraising and we still need about 750 pounds to reach our target all contributions will be appreciated thank you very much take care subscribe if you haven't already